life begins at 40. But for some of us, it really drags its heels. One of the best parts about being a guy your age, and frankly, there aren't many, so you should really take full advantage of it, uh -huh. is that you can rebuild your entire wardrobe with like 16 items. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 midlife crisis movies. Please just tell me what's happening to me in plain English with, without the mumbo jumbo. For this list, we're looking at any movie that tackles the tricky period experienced by most people sometime during their late 30s and 40s. I know how men think. I'm not happy here, I'm not happy there. I'll be happy. Yeah. Quarter-life crisis movies such as Office Space haven't been included because, although the characters in them are clearly stressed out, they're just not old enough to qualify. Back up in your ass with the resurrection. This is the group harder than an erection that shows no affection. Number 10, The Family Man. Hi, Jack. Evelyn, right? If you've made it to middle age, chances are you've clocked up countless what-if moments. And it's probable that at least one of those is linked to your love life. Kate Reynolds. Her assistant said you could reach her at home after eight. Kate Reynolds was my girlfriend in college. In The Family Man, Nicolas Cage has an opportunity to live the life he might have had if he'd stayed with his former girlfriend, rather than pursuing a successful career. You want this cake? I want it. <laughs> Thank you. What follows has him rethinking infidelity, uncharacteristically playing with his food, and cringing, nay crying over home videos of a past he sadly never actually had. Oh. Pass them by. Pass them by. Now you're in the center ring. Suspend your disbelief for this, and it'll reaffirm your love for life. You have to promise me, Kate, because if you don't, then it's like it never happened, and I don't think I can live with that. Number nine, JCVD. A semi-fictionalized biopic of action movie icon Jean-Claude Van Damme. JCVD sees the actor play himself caught amid a post office heist in Brussels. Jean-Claude Van Damme is en train de braquer la poste de la rue du Pavillon. In the movie, Van Damme's in the twilight years of his career. Roles are no longer available, his popularity is waning, and he has plenty of other off-screen problems as well. In short, Van Damme's not the icon he once was, and is struggling to adjust. Je suis montré le pauvre riche, et je me suis dit pourquoi n'est pas tous comme ça, comme moi. Pourquoi les privilèges? Moi, je suis comme un autre. A film that hinges especially on an incredibly emotive fourth wall breaking monologue scene. JCVD shows the muscles in a whole new light. J'y crois. C'est pas un film. C'est une réalité. Number eight, The Incredibles. Thank you, Mr. Incredible. You've done it again. Yeah, you're the best. No, I'm just here to help. A midlife crisis can be inspired by a longing for the glory days. With The Incredibles, Pixar shows this mentality through the eyes of a retired superhero. But I suggest you stand clear. There could be trouble. No, no, he's quite tiny. The fame and adoration of times gone by has former superhero Mr. Incredible, desperate to escape the monotony of a settled life and an office job. I'm calling to celebrate a momentous occasion. We are now officially moved in. Yeah, well, that's great, honey. But considering his wife and kids also happen to have amazing powers, this not-so-ordinary family finds themselves called back to their crime-fighting past and saving the world from danger once again. Abort, abort, abort! Even if the suits of yesteryear are a little tighter than they once were, Pixar entertainingly shows us that even a mundane life filled with love can be its own adventure. I'm not encouraging, I'm just asking how fast you... Honey! Number seven, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Honey, I'm seven non-Fox years old now. My father died at seven and a half. I don't want to live in a hole anymore. And I'm going to do something about it. In another animated portrayal of middle-aged problems, Wes Anderson takes the director's chair for this stop-motion effort of the Roll Doll adaptation. I've got it. There's not a moment to lose. Why didn't I think of this sooner? Mr. and Mrs. Fox were once the finest thieves around. But with the birth of their son, they're forced to lead more responsible lives. What are you wearing? Why a cape with the pants tucked into your socks? Well, I guess he's just... 
differently. However, for Mr. Fox, the romance of the raid and the thrill of the chase are just too tempting to ignore. <laughs> His escapades land the family in hot water, though. Or should that be cider? As this movie shows how far a fox will go to avenge its tail. One of those slovenly farmers is probably wearing my tail as a necktie by now. Number six, City Slickers. Value this time in your life, kids. Because this is the time in your life when you still have your choices. And it goes by so fast. Disillusioned with what life has given him, Billy Crystal stars as Mitch Robbins. And as demonstrated by his classroom pep talk, Mitch's outlook on life is about as bleak as it's possible to be. 20s are a blur. 30s, you raise your family, you make a little money, and you think to yourself, what happened to my 20s? But when he and two friends leave the city for two weeks to work a cattle drive, they're all forced into a change of perspective. Your life is a do-over. You got a clean slate. The wizened cowboy Curly Washburn claims to know the secret to life, and it's just up to Mitch to locate the reason for his. That's great, but what's the one thing? That's what you've got to figure out. Number five, crazy stupid love. What are you, in a fraternity? Are you insane? Are you in a fraternity? Who says love has to make sense? Boasting an ensemble cast intrinsically linked by Steve Carell's hapless middle-ager, Cal Weaver. This movie is definitely crazy and at times even stupid. Can I hear something else? Really? Uh -huh. I've only had sex with one woman in my entire life. Honest or not honest? That's honest. In the beginning, Cal must come to terms with his newfound status as a single man after his wife reveals that she's been unfaithful. Where are your wallets? By forming an unlikely friendship with a relentless womanizer, Cal does begin to build a new life. But even so, he still loves the mother of his children. I have loved her even when I've hated her. Only married couples will understand that one. What follows is a monumental mix-up and a laugh-out-loud look at relationships. Please. I'm gonna beat you until your brains fall out! Time out, time out, hold on, hold on! Number four, Manhattan. Well, Mr. you knew my history when you married me. Yeah, I know, my analyst warned me, but you were so beautiful that I, and I got another analyst. Woody Allen has a habit of bringing at least a little beauty out of a midlife crisis, with the magical realism of Midnight in Paris being a prime example. Yeah, that's, you know, what the present is. It's a little unsatisfying because life's a little unsatisfying. But we've gone further back in the Allen archive and selected Manhattan as an especially memorable tale of middle age. You married your, your, your yeah. teacher? Yeah, of course. It's very, very... Well, uh, listen to that. I mean, he failed me and I fell in love with him. It's so that's perfect, perfect, right? Yeah, that's, I know. That is, I mean, I was sleeping with him and he had the nerve to give me an F. Allen stars as Isaac Davis, a twice-divorced 40-something writer of comedy. Really? You like that? <sighs> the, the photographs downstairs. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Great, absolutely great. Intent on finding at least a little focus for his existence, Davis frequents art galleries and discusses world literature, while all the while looking for love against a dazzling New York backdrop. Everybody gets corrupted. Look, you have to have a little faith in people. Number three, falling down. Listen, fellas, I've had a really rare morning. <laughs> I'm not in the mood to go. What should he pay? How about that f***ing briefcase? While most midlife crisis movies offer some hope of a positive resolution, Falling Down sees Michael Douglas play an estranged parent, ex-husband, and formerly employed down and out, who's reached rock bottom and is staying there. I'm the bad guy? Yeah. <laughs> How'd that happen? As his frustration at life gets the better of him, he sets off on a city-wide rampage, acquiring greater weapons as he goes. You should have a, a goddamn petting zoo! Instead you got these, these stupid electric carts for you old men have nothing better to do? <laughs> William Foster isn't exactly a bad person, he's just been pushed to do bad things. And woe betide anyone who gets in his way. I'm really sorry. Yeah. Hey, I'm really sorry too. Get gun! Let's get organized. Number two, lost in translation. Does it get easier? No. Yes. In this comedy drama, Bill Murray shines as Bob Harris, an aging American movie star stuck filming a whiskey commercial in Tokyo, Japan. For relaxing times, make it Suntory time. 
Scarlett Johansson's Charlotte is a recent graduate following her photographer husband to the city with no clear idea of what she wants to do in life. The more you know who you are and what you want, the less you let things upset you. Yeah. I just don't know what I'm supposed to be. The pair forms an unexpected friendship thanks to their shared insomnia and helps each other through both the fears of youth and the dissatisfaction of experience. I hope your Porsche works out. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. Come by. Lost in Translation leaves its audience deep in thought, whether they're middle-aged or otherwise. Bye. Bye. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. It's a cold reminder. One day later than yesterday, one year later than last year, and that sooner or later, it will come. Hello? Mom's busy! Hello? What? I, sorry, but I, I, I think we went to high school together. At the same time? Yeah. You're Mavis Gary? Mavis Gary Crane now. To be honest, it's not unusual. No offense. No, no, that's okay. It's okay. There's no one here I'm attracted to either. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of an ugly crowd, really. Dad, this is uh, Sid. Oh, Sid. What's up, bro? Don't ever do that to me again. Number one, American Beauty. Lester, just stop it! No, no. You don't get to tell me what to do ever again. With five Academy Awards under its belt, American Beauty follows the story of Lester Burnham and his infatuation with Angela, a high school classmate of his daughter's. This is my friend, Angela Hayes. Okay, good to meet you. You were also good tonight, very precise. Needless to say, Lester undertakes the very definition of a midlife crisis in the film. He dreams of girls half his age, he relentlessly works out, buys cars, and ruthlessly lets his family know just what he thinks of them. I am sick and tired of being treated like I don't exist. You two do whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it, and I don't complain. All I want oh, is the same... Oh, you don't complain? Oh, please, excuse me, excuse me. I must be psychotic then. If you don't complain, what is this? It can make for difficult viewing, but it's also essential viewing. That one. You don't complain. American Beauty is just a beautiful movie. I'm just an ordinary guy with nothing to lose. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite movie about a midlife crisis? No, I appreciate it, but I told my wife I wouldn't drink tonight. For more crisis-worthy top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. To our survival.